So we'll ask you about Ireland and as well. It's been a fantastic year for Ireland. Um, looks like they've gone to another level there. Possibly the best Irish team of all time at this stage, would you say? Yeah, I think so. You look at look at the standards that, that they've set for themselves. You, you speak uh, to the to the players about the environment that they're in. They say it's a really good, healthy environment. They've you know, they, they're they're passionate about it, showing up for work every single day, and you can see that on the field and the way they've adapted. I think in the way they played, it's, um, they've brought their game on to a new level in terms of you know dealing with oppositions, coming up with um, different strategies to to get scores. It's um it's been really really enjoyable to watch them. I think not just that first fifteen, but they've got they've got a backup squad there that could, can do a job. I think that's really important going into a World Cup here. If you've got any injuries, they've got guys at that level to compete. So. Fingers crossed for a really good summer. And listen, with the results they've had over, say, the past 18 months, especially against the sides, the New Zealand tests, will that give them the edge to push forward and go past? You know, we're not going to discount the pool stage, but you're hoping that a team who are ranked first in the world are going to be able to navigate the pool and go further than, than we've ever done. Let's not talk about winning the World Cup, but let's just say go further than, than we've ever done. Yeah, look, that's, that's always the aim. I think you look at the, the draw, it's, it's a tough draw. Um, and they're... I suppose not under any illusions of how difficult they will be, and the World Cup is never easy. We've seen that in the past, but given you know the experiences in New Zealand, winning a Test series down there, uh, coming through Autumn Internationals, where I suppose the team didn't play particularly well, but they found a way to win, and ultimately that's what you want against those bigger sides, the Southern Hemisphere sides. I think that kind of that feeling of that Southern Hemisphere dominance is gone. I think Ireland have really kind of won those games in the past um, and giving guys a massive amount of belief and confidence going to these games it come the last 20 minutes of a big match that they know they can do it so I think, like I said fingers crossed I hope it's, um, it's a really good campaign and it's, it's all in the preparation now keeping guys fit keeping guys healthy and prepare well going into a massive year and listen just finally then where's the other threats going to come from it does seem that a switch has happened that it's gone a bit more northern hemisphere the favourites now the southern hemisphere sides talking to a few uh, legends here seem to be quite happy that they're creeping under the radar a bit. Look, you can never write them off. Um, New Zealand have gone under a radar now for a while. We, who knows, a bit of transition as well, a new coach potentially coming in as well. So look, South Africa are always a threat, big massive pack. Um, again, Eddie Jones has gone to Australia, who knows what he's going to do there. You know, he'll have um, added motivation as well, you know, having left the English job. So look, England, not in a great place at the moment, but who knows what they can do. So I think for the first time in a long time, it's a really open World Cup, which I think, you know, for as a spectator, it's really exciting to see. Um, so yeah, look, never right off the Southern Hemisphere, but it, it adds a little bit of spice, yeah. Good stuff. Peter, Cheers. pleasure. Thanks, lads.